Hey folks, welcome to ADSR. I'm Stephen Ellistad. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel and follow on social media for great production content. In this tutorial, I just wanted to show you how to do a little bit of internal resampling inside a machine. So when we say internal resampling, we're talking about taking the parts we've already created inside a machine, whether it's layered pads or individual patterns, and then actually recording them to another group or another pad. Why do we do this? We can do it to save memory, if we're running low on memory, to create alternate versions, or maybe to just combine layered parts into one sound so they're easier to trigger. And so I started up a basic beat. Do the pad mode here. And so I've got this beat across two separate sections. and I want to combine them into one. And that's really easy to do. So in the software, we'll just use the sampling section. Come over here. If we're doing that on the hardware, we just hit sampling. But before we do that, we need to create a new group. So I can either come here or in the software, just like so. And we'll just call this sampled beat. Okay, now how do we do this? Uh, really simply in the software, we're going to come over here. We have a couple of options. We have our sources, external, stereo, or mono. If we're bringing in something, say, from an audio interface or another piece of software, for example. But we're going to use internal. And here we can choose from internal either of two different groups. Because I have the sound on two different groups, I want to choose the master. Now, we also have two different modes. We have sync mode or detect mode. If we're in detect mode and we hit play, as soon as the signal crosses that threshold, whichever we set, that's when it will start recording. But for this case, we're going to go into sync mode because these are already set up. Now, if I want to go ahead and do that, I can now just at this point hit start and it'll say waiting. As soon as I hit restart, and there we go. And so a couple options here we can do now, if I mute those other sections out and hit play. And just that simple. And so now we're in sample mode. On the hardware, I'm going to come over here to edit. It looks a little thin, so I'm going to go ahead and normalize. So I'll select normalize over here. Make sure it plays exactly the way I want it. And that sounds pretty good. I'm going to actually zoom in to the end a little bit and see how tight that came in. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and hit normalize. And I don't need to truncate it. And there we go. A nice clean sample. Now, if I want to go into the sampler here, it's often a good idea to go down to one note polyphony as well as making sure that we're on one shot so, so that it plays the entire way through. That's a pretty cool way of working. It'll actually save you some memory resources. Another neat trick I like to do is now that I've got it sampled, duplicate it, and now maybe... I can apply some automation to one of these. And so let's go ahead and insert a, actually I'll do it in the software. We're going to insert a filter. And now. And so now if I want to automate that, maybe on the hardware I'll do this. I'm going to go ahead, if I want it to play continuously, first I'll make sure I have a pattern going and that pattern is one bar long. And then I'll go into step mode, fixed velocity, boom. So now when I hit play, it will, it will just loop. Although it looks like I actually need to make that pattern two bars long to catch the full beat. Get out of step mode now. And let's automate that filter.
So now I've got two different pads. And now say I wanted to maybe layer the two of those together. I could just select the new pad, go to sampling, record, internal. This time we'll say the sample beat groove. So everything coming out of this group, sync two bars, and just hit start and play. And so what do I have now? I have a third pad which contains a combination of both my unaffected and my effective beat, which could be nice to trigger variations through playback, whether you're doing it live or what have you. So again, I need to get out of here, make sure I go to one shot, and again, also go to one note polyphony, it just makes things a little easier. And let's get out of plug-in. So really quite simple. Now I've got a, a clean one, an affected one, and one that combines the best of both worlds. And so I can use this for all kinds of interesting, creative, live performance tricks or what have you. So there you go. Hope you learned something from this. And make sure you do subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel and follow on social media for all kinds of great production content. Thanks. Have a great day.